Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my breakdown of the leaked Avengers What If trailer footage from D23. I've talked a little bit about the series before, so we'll break it all down. We have a whole bunch of new details, and we're doing a new round of the Disney Plus streaming service giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite What If story on the video. What do you want them to do? What if Wolverine fought Thanos during Avengers Endgame? What if General Ross became the Red Hulk instead of Bruce Banner becoming the green version of the Hulk? We got information on about six episodes, including what's going on with Spider-Man during the series. There'll be 23 episodes total, one for each of the movies in the MCU so far. So that includes Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home, as well as using Spider-Man in the ones that they do for Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame and Captain America Civil War. The whole idea is that you have the Watcher narrating the series the same way that he narrates a lot of Marvel comics. Marvel What If is a long-running comic series. Jeffrey Wright is going to be their Watcher. They announced him at the Comic-Con panel. He'll be narrating all the episodes as the main version of the Watcher, and every once in a while he'll step out of the shadows to interact with the characters in the episodes. Maybe not every single episode, because it's really special and really rare that the Watcher ever speaks to any of the Marvel characters. It's actually been a while since that's happened in the comics. If you're a longtime fan of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they did an episode inspired by the Marvel What If series where they all got stuck inside this mainframe and lived this alternate reality within the computer mainframe. But technically, it wasn't a real What If story because it was all happening inside a simulation instead of actually happening to the characters in reality. So breaking down the six episodes that we have footage for, number six, the Black Panther episode. What if Black Panther became Star-Lord? Technically, it would be what if T'Challa became Star-Lord? Because I think in this scenario, just looking at the footage here, he's wearing Star-Lord's uniform. He's probably not also wearing the mantle of Black Panther during this scenario. Because this would be a situation where his father winds up being Ego the Living Planet. He visits Earth. His mother is still from Wakanda. But then you have to imagine him during the plot of the original Guardians of the Galaxy movie where you have the Ravagers coming to pick up a young version of Peter Quill, take him to space, and he grows up with the Ravagers. So you have a version of T'Challa Black Panther growing up with the Ravagers. He's wearing Star-Lord's helmet. It looks like he's on Morag here at the beginning of the events of the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie to steal the Power Stone. So that sounds wildly different, but because it's a Black Panther episode, Killmonger is also coming back and starring in it, meaning that if Black Panther wasn't there to become Black Panther during the events of the Black Panther movie, that means that Killmonger is probably able to come back, take the mantle, seize Wakanda, and then use their vibranium to take over the world just like his plan was during the Black Panther movie. Even though all the what if stories don't always have a downer ending, that does sound like a bit of a downer ending for planet Earth. Darkest timeline Earth, even while Star-Lord T'Challa is playing around in the stars having fun with the Guardians of the Galaxy team. A lot of you also noticed that the animation style looks very similar to the animation style on Iron Man Armored Adventures, but that's cell shaded animation. I think this is going to be a little bit more premium than that. A man on a mission. Let's go. Number five, there's a Captain America First Avenger episode. I believe that's even supposed to be the very first episode of the series. What if Peggy Carter got the super soldier serum and became Captain America or a version of Captain America? And what if skinny Steve Rogers got a big Iron Man suit designed by Howard Stark? They're bringing back young Howard Stark, Arnim Zola, Dr. Erskine for that episode. This is all going to be half hour animation. So you have to imagine them condensing the plot of Captain America First Avenger into a half hour episode. So the first little bit of the episode plays almost exactly like the events of the first Captain America movie. She's the one that goes into the device, gets the super soldier serum. But when she comes out, because she's British, they call her Captain Britain. She wears a Captain Britain comic book costume. Remember, there was a Captain Britain Easter egg during Avengers Endgame. During the Peggy Carter 1970s scene, she mentions an Agent Braddock. Braddock is Captain Britain in the comics. So even though the What If series is sort of like an Elseworlds story, like what if things were different, technically not canon to the MCU, within the actual real canon of the MCU, there was a Captain Britain. We just don't know what he was doing running around during the 1970s. But this is trailer footage from what it's actually going to look like during this series. So like you see Skinny Rogers in this giant iron monger tank looking Iron Man suit. It's World War II, so of course the suit would look like an actual tank because Howard Stark probably just repurposes an actual tank to make the suit. 
The rest of the episode plays out very similar to what the plot of the original Captain America movie was, although I don't know if they're going to get Hugo Weaving to come back, because remember, Ross Marquand is now the new version of Red Skull inside the MCU because Hugo Weaving did not want to come back in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. They didn't say why, so entertain whatever conspiracy theory you want. Maybe he just didn't want to do Red Skull anymore. But we do have a version of Red Skull in Ross Marquand. He's mostly known from The Walking Dead, so he does a lot of TV. I think it's pretty easy to get him to come back to do more Red Skull inside the What If series. The showrunners of the What If series actually did an interview at D23 talking a little bit about the dynamic of what's going on during these episodes. I think the most surprising thing for a lot of the actors has been they're getting to play aspects of their characters yes. that they would never get to do in the MCU. And even though we just talked about a Guardians of the Galaxy Black Panther episode number four, because there's one for every single MCU movie, there is a what if episode for both Guardians of the Galaxy movies with number four, Thanos coming back, Kraglin, Korath, Yondu, Taserface is coming back. So that's probably a version of events where Ego the Living Planet might be successful because the whole idea is that Peter Quill is able to stand against his father and say, no, I'm going to stay with the family that I made for myself, not the family that I was born with. Imagine a version of Peter Quill that completely embraced his cosmic abilities and his celestial heritage. I know there are a lot of questions about how those worked and why he didn't use his powers later. The whole idea is that being half celestial gives him a vastly expanded lifespan. Even without cosmic powers, he still will live longer. He won't get sick like other people. But the closer he gets to Ego the Living Planet, the more powerful he gets. He was at his most powerful when they were standing right next to his brain. So because Ego died or seemingly died during that movie, because there's a question of whether or not you can actually really kill him, all of Peter Quill's greater celestial abilities basically went away. So he seems more like a normal person, but 50% of his DNA is still celestial. So he still will live longer than normal humans. Three, there's a Thor episode. Loki, Thor, Korg, the Grandmaster, and Jane Foster, Nick Fury are coming back. Because all these Marvel Phase 4 TV shows are meant to cross over and set up what's going on in the movies, I assume that the Thor episode is just meant to set up the concept of Jane Foster Thor from an alternate reality, or whether it's going to be Jane Foster in our reality that wields the hammer. They haven't really been clear about that because technically there is no Mjolnir in the main universe of the MCU right now. They took the one that they had during Endgame back to Thor the Dark World. So there is no Mjolnir in present day. So the only way you get Mjolnir in present day is if Loki from the alternate reality brings one in traveling from that place. But they haven't said much about what's going on with Hela or whether or not Kate Blanchett is going to come back. She did say that she wants to come back. But if there's going to be 23 episodes, then the 20-something MCU actors that they announced publicly at Comic-Con are probably just a fraction of the actual MCU actors that will be coming to do the episodes. The series is going to premiere summer 2021, and we get Thor 4 Love and Thunder that November. So they might just double up on episodes. They've done it for a lot of other animated series in the past where they release a block of episodes every single week instead of just one episode. Two, we know about the Ant-Man episode. They didn't say whether it's Ant-Man the Wasp or it's the original Ant-Man movie, but Ant-Man, Hank Pym, and the X-Con team are coming back. Like, what if they had gotten stuck in the quantum realm? What if Hank Pym had continued to wear the Ant-Man suit instead of passing it off to Scott Lang in the first movie? What if Janet Van Dyne had come out of the quantum realm sooner? What if Hope had worn the Ant-Man suit during the events of the first movie? Because it's animation, I also expect them to get into way more quantum realm stuff because it's way cheaper for them to do those crazy special effects when they're animating it. But probably the biggest episode that they leaked trailer footage of is, number one, Marvel Zombies. You see the scene of Winter Soldier in present day getting ready to fight zombie Captain America. If you're not a big comic book fan or you're not familiar with the concept of Marvel Zombies, that's a story from Marvel Comics done by Robert Kirkman of Walking Dead fame. Big surprise, he does zombie stories. He does a Marvel Zombies story where zombie Reed Richards tricks his ultimate universe counterpart Reed Richards into opening a portal to the zombie universe or the reality where everyone has become a zombie, allowing them into the ultimate universe after which you can guess what happened. All the zombies start consuming all the regular versions of the characters in the Ultimate Universe. Meanwhile, zombies decide that the flesh of other zombies isn't just as satisfying, so Galactus shows up because this is a big Fantastic Four story. Eventually, the zombies are able to wear him down, consume him, steal his life force, empowering them with cosmic level abilities. They set out to the stars to Galactus-style consume everything in sight. 
because the series isn't coming for a couple years, it is possible for them to use Fantastic Four X-Men mutant concepts during this. And while I was making my Spider-Man video yesterday, it was actually discovered that the reason why Marvel can still use Spider-Man in this series is because Marvel has the TV rights for half hour animation. That's why most of the Spider-Man TV series so far have come from Marvel and not from Sony. So because all these what if episodes are half hour animation, they can do whatever they want to with Spider-Man. I don't know if they're allowed to use Tom Holland though, or if they have to sign a new contract for that, or get another actor to be the voice of Spider-Man in these episodes, the same way that they got Ross Marquand to be the Red Skull during Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. The very first Marvel Phase 4 series that's going to drop will be Falcon and Winter Soldier, and that'll be next fall. Not this year, but next year. The What If series is going to drop summer 2021, so we'll probably get some more footage at Comic-Con next year. Maybe some other stuff will leak out before then. If it does, I will totally do a video for it, but let me know in the comments which What If stories do you want them to do. And the idea is that they'll continue to do new episodes, so when we get the Marvel Phase 4 movies, Marvel Phase 5, Phase 6, they'll do new seasons of What If with episodes for each of those brand new movies. There's a couple new Marvel videos that I'm working on while you guys wait for that. You can click here for my non-spoilery Joker movie review, and you can click here for my breakdown of that Fantastic Four Comic-Con teaser. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.